Subterra Mundus is a giant hidden cave system populated by prehistoric flora and fauna. It is lit by an unknown gaseous element that replicates days and nights in tandem with the tides of the surface. Entrances all around the world have allowed organisms from the Mesozoic and Cenozoic to find their way into this hidden world. Once there, they diversified into new families and species. While dinosaurs ruled the lands, the skies were ruled by their flying cousins, the pterosaurs. Some of the biggest pterosaurs were the Astarchids, the very largest of which were genera like Quetzalcoatlus and Hatsigopteryx. Astarchoids first came to Subterramundus at the same time Phalacidromids and Tenochtitlans did. These would have been basal species, such as the Brazilian Keras Dracon or the African Cericeps. Unfortunately for them, Phalacidromids fared much better in the forests and jungles and quickly overtook the Asdarkoids as apex flying predators. Under the rule of the carnivorous Phalacidromids, the Asdarkoids were forced to adapt to new niches and explore different food options. Oloropterans are a family of long, slender Asdarkoids with a most unusual diet for their clade. They are herbivores. These Asdarkoids feed primarily on leaves and ferns, supplementing with berries and fruit. This diet varies slightly with the different species but it is usually consistent. In place of teeth, all eruptorans possess modified keratinous spikes in the beak and on the tongue, which help grip and shred vegetation. To avoid direct competition with sauropods and other high browsers, all eruptorans typically feed on difficult terrain where large herbivorous dinosaurs are unable to climb, such as spire forests or heavily inclined slopes. Their ability to fly is also highly beneficial in avoiding other herbivores and reaching high food. The largest genus of Oloropteran, and one of the largest subterramundian pterosaurs, is Oloropterus itself, a 5 meter tall browser that prefers high growing leaves and fruit. Oloropterus is not as aggressive as other subterramundian herbivores. While the beak and claws can deliver some painful scratches, Oloropterans will typically fly away rather than fight. Despite what one might expect from such a relatively gentle giant, Oloropterus and its relatives are not caring parents. Females will scrape together some materials and earth to cover their eggs, but leave the nest just before the flaplings hatch. The young, like those of many other subterramundian animals, have to find their way to safety and figure out how to survive entirely on their own. As flaplings, Oloropterus are omnivorous, with fruit, insects and small vertebrates making up the bulk of their diet. Once they reach adulthood and have gained the larger gut and the bacteria required to digest vast amounts of foliage, they no longer need animal prey. At their small size, flaplings are also vulnerable to a variety of predators. These include small theropods, snakes, mammals and predatory pterosaurs. To combat the high mortality rate, the pterosaurs synchronize their hatching and emerge from the ground all at once. When they all emerge, they must make their way to safe accommodations such as pillar faces or stone spires. These will serve as ideal refuges from terrestrial carnivores. 
It is not uncommon for all erupturants from different clutches to congregate in the same area in their thousands. For additional protection, the flaplings are covered in spotted brown fluff which aids in camouflage. While this does not always work on predators with particularly acute eyesight, it significantly reduces the risk of being snatched. As they approach maturity, their camouflaging baby fluff gradually fades into their adult coloration, which in most species is white. At first, their pale coloration may seem ill-suited for life in a densely forested habitat, but when one considers the main predators of these relatively gentle giants, their pearly colors make more sense. The most common predators of the Oloropterans are not ground-dwelling theropods, but large pterosaurs. Although easier to spot in a dark jungle, when they fly up and against the bright light at the cavern ceiling, their white bodies become much harder to spot for their flying predators. This significantly increases their chances of escaping. Although far removed from their ferocious and carnivorous cousins, the Oloropterans were able to establish themselves quite well in this harsh and competitive world. Changing their diets proved to be a significant advantage in avoiding competition with carnivorous pterosaurs. The last true Asdarkids and the only carnivorous Asdarkoids of Subterramundus are descended from Asian species that came during the end Cretaceous influx. These pterosaurs were likely generalist predators such as Sehijangopterus, which would have preyed on small animals like multituberculates and small theropods. Unfortunately, they were not able to compete with the established Phalacidromids, and the true Astarchids were relegated to the shadows. Modern Subterramundian Astarchids are now represented by species that don't get larger than a condor. Microdracopterids are the last Asdarkids to inherit the carnivorous diet of their Cretaceous ancestors. These pterosaurs are still active predators, although at their size they only prey on invertebrates and very small mammals and reptiles. Many of these tiny predators hang out near large theropods like tyrannosaurs, abelisaurs and noosaurs which allow these small scavengers to pick their teeth clean and remove parasites. By performing this simple service to the giant predators, the microdracopterids are protected from smaller hunters that may try to make a meal out of them. Some microdracopterids, such as microstomas, are probe feeders convergent with the tiny Asdarkid leptostomia or modern piper birds. Bee species eat worms and small burrowing insects. They are commonly found in swamps and wetlands where there are plenty of small invertebrates to sustain them. Probing microdracopterids usually live in large flocks for protection. With so many pairs of eyes watching for potential threats, catching one is quite the challenge, at least for most predators. Microdracopterids are highly polygamous, with both males and females taking on multiple partners to maximize genetic diversity. Unlike Phenicodactylus, they do not compete for the right to mate. For this reason, they lack sexual dimorphism. Like all eruptorans, microdracopterids do not care for their young. Females gather in groups to lay their eggs in loose, moist soil to incubate them. While they do not lay a large number of eggs, many females will lay in the same place to maximize safety in numbers. For maximum efficiency, the flaplings synchronize their hatching and emerge all at once. As soon as they leave the incubating soil, 
the little pterosaurs must find a safe place to wait for their wings to function properly so they can take to the air for the first time. Sadly, most microgecopterids will die before they reach their first year, as they are easy prey for small predators like squamates, young theropods, or other pterosaurs. As soon as they reach maturity, they spread out to find or form a flock. Cathartidactyls are a subfamily of microgecopterids that have evolved to fill a scavenger niche. Without vultures in Subtermundus, the job of cleaning up rotten corpses is taken by abelisaurs and these little pterosaurs. To help tear flesh from carcasses, their thin, curved beaks have evolved a pair of notches to keep a firm grip on the meat. Similar to New World vultures on the surface, cathartidactyls have an extraordinary sense of smell. This helps them find food in the densely forested areas where visibility is limited. Unusually among pterosaurs, cathartidactyls have a rapid metabolism that allows them to quickly and efficiently digest rotting and even highly diseased meat with ease. Featherless necks and large crests containing blood vessels help prevent overheating from their active lifestyle. During the cold subterramundian nights, however, they shut down and fall into a torpor-like sleep which lasts the entire night and only ends at the break of dawn. Since they are highly vulnerable to predation in their sleep, Cathartidactyls rest in large groups and roost on high ground to avoid predators. Once the sun gas of Subterramundus returns, they resume their activity and gorge themselves as much as they can before they are forced to shut down again. While scavenging may seem like a lowly lifestyle, without them, many ecosystems would collapse. Being able to digest diseased meat means these unique pterosaurs play a vital role in Subterramundus. Once the undisputed aerial kings of their domain, the Astarchids of a hidden world now no longer hold that title. By specializing for small prey and carrion, the last pterosaurs of this once mighty lineage along with their herbivorous cousins, have managed to survive in this harsh world. Thanks for watching! This video is the second part in the four-part Pterosaurs of Subterramundus series. The next video will cover the Tapajarids. As usual, special thanks to everyone who helped me with ideas for creature design or behavior and everyone who contributed art for this video. Your help and contribution is deeply appreciated. Stay tuned for more pterosaurs. See you in the next one.